Greetings. Time for another little video. I know you guys have been asking for some airbrushing. Some of you guys anyway, especially Dr. C. What's up, Dr. C? So I thought I would uh, kind of do a little airbrushing. So I've got my primed hive tie right here. And I've uh, primed them white because the stuff that I'm using really, I want a really bright effect on my tyranids. So you can prime whatever color. Um, but I thought I'd go over the airbrush and its parts just a little bit real quick because if you're not comfortable breaking your airbrush down and cleaning it, uh, you shouldn't be airbrushing because it's, um, it's something you're going to need to clean quite a bit. So this is an Eclipse HPC Plus um, or Iwata HPC Plus. They make an Eclipse, which is uh, really nice as well. But uh, anyway, so let's kind of take a look at the parts here real quick. Um, we've got um, the, uh, the uh, needle here. Uh, now this guy you're going to need to clean off all the time um, just because it gets uh, the tip of this guy will get paint dried up on it uh, as well as when you put the paint in this needles going back and forth like this so it's going to pull some paint into the channel that the needle goes through and then if it dries the needle gets stuck so you're going to want to take this guy off and clean it all the time uh, at the end of every session at the very least okay um, and then you can see where the needle kind of goes through here so this needle the paint's in here the needle pulls back and that's where you get that paint stuck in there. So whatever airbrush you got, take it apart, get really comfortable with it, like field stripping a, a, a gun, I suppose. But anyway, so then we've got the uh, the front of it here. And let me just show you just so you guys get an idea of what's going on. If we look, can I get this to focus? Anyway, right under here is a little hole. Uh, and then we've got the needle right there sorry trying to get some focus so when I pull the needle back right when I pull the needle back that's where the paint comes out and what happens is right under here the air comes out this guy right here forces the air and the paint through this little hole right here this little guy forces the air and the paint to kind of mix in this little channel here as it gets sprayed out so that's where kind of everything happens so um, so this is something we're going to need to clean out quite a bit as well and the easiest way to clean that out is a q-tip and you just get that q-tip in a little bit of water so that the top of it's wet and you just jam it in the top and just spin that around because what's going to happen is paint will dry on that needle so you'll see me do that a lot so make sure you got a little little cup of water out to get your q-tip wet and clean this guy often the other thing you're going to want to do is as you change colors i've just got an old Eye drops uh, contact solution bottle I just filled with water. And I use distilled water just to make sure it's nice and clean and remind myself this is distilled water. So, And we just clean that out between every color. Um, the other two things you're really going to want is a cleaning jar. If you don't have one of these, it's so that you can spray all your extra paint out and clean it out. This guy gets gross and fills up with all kinds of nastiness. Um, some rubber gloves because uh, you're not going to want to... The paint is... Um, going to still be a little damp and wet and you don't want to get fingerprints and all kinds of stuff so this just makes it easier to handle plus your hands aren't this would all be on my fingers now I'm not going to be using this I'm going to put my health at risk but then I also use just a little 3M respirator because the paint gets in the air if you uh, don't use a face mask the first time you blow your nose after airbrushing you're going to have the appropriate colored boogers to whatever you're using um, so I guess we'll use this as a chance to kind of review the kind of <clears throat> the the paint I'm using. Excuse me. So what I'm using here is uh, this is um, a ghost tint by Minotaur. Really nice stuff. It's kind of like kind of like a, the old GW inks um, and kind of like their glazes. So um, whenever you paint it over, it's going to keep a lot of that under that that base color, which is why I'm using white because I really want these guys to be nice and bright. So um, I've already kind of shaken this up a little bit. But the one thing you'll want to do with your airbrush paints, especially if you get specific paints that don't need to be thinned, is really shake them up. So we're going to turn on the airbrush, or the compressor. Now, I don't think that'll be too loud. I think you can still hear me. So we're just going to squeeze in a few drops here. No, maybe more than a few drops. I don't like to fill it too full. I find if I fill it more than that, um, it doesn't seem to pull the paint down. I don't know if it's there's some physics behind it or that's how you're supposed to do it. But... Um, so what's going to happen is I push down on this guy because this is a dual action airbrush which you definitely want to have. I push down on this guy 
I get just air, right? Nothing's coming out. When I start to pull back, I slowly start to get paint. See that? So you're definitely going to want to get kind of a feel for it. The other thing too is, unlike a brush, you know, you brush, you put right down where you want it to paint. With the airbrush, there's obviously going to be a little bit of space because the airbrush isn't going to physically touch the model. So you need to kind of get a feel where the paint is going to land because you got some space there. Because right now we've done the priming. That's easy. You just spray everything. But now I'm only going to do all basically his skin. I'm not going to get his carapace uh, and I'm not going to get all the wings. I'm just going to get kind of the veins in between. So let's get to it. Let's start painting. So I'm slowly pulling back on the airbrush. Whoops, and you can see already since I just did just a kind of a test spray there, the paint's already dried on the tip. So we're just going to get our Q-tip to clean this guy up. If your paint's not coming out readily and easily, you're going to get big blast if you pull it back too far. So right, there we go. See that? Now we're good. And I'm aiming for the middle of the arm, and then I'm slowly working my way to the edge. Uh, and then I'm pulling back a little bit more, get more of that paint going. Airbrushing, just like regular brushing, you want to put on in a few layers. Uh, now, unlike painting, these layers dry super quick, so now I can go back over the same area for a second layer. Uh, but if I go too much at once, it gets runny, and you start to get those little bleeding lines from it pushing the paint out. So take it nice and easy, not too much at once. Now in this particular case, you'll see the effect I'm going for afterwards, so I don't mind. I actually want a little bit of bleed into the wings. Uh, because when you put like washes and things like that down, it'll kind of emphasize that line, so you don't have to worry too much. Uh, and we're just going to do this over all of his, all of his parts. So what I think we'll do here, uh, just saying that this will take a little while, is um, we'll maybe put in some high speed for you guys. So um, cue the high speed once the tyrant stops dancing. Let's talk overspray just for a minute so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. If you look, obviously this membrane part of the wing um, has gotten some paint on it. Now in this particular case, um, that's good for me because I'm going to use a, uh, I'm going to use an ink to kind of make this transition. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind when you're painting. Now, Tyranids in particular are very organic, so a lot of times on creatures like this in nature, Yes, we're talking about real things as we're painting Tyranids. Uh, they have subtle transitions between, you know, it's not just like, oh, we draw a line and now there's a new color. A lot of times there are a lot of subtle, subtle transitions. So if you look at, um, kind of just even on his shell here, when we go over with 
uh, the orange, that's going to give it kind of a cool effect. Um, the detail that you put in later, you know, the airbrush is never going to be as finely detailed as a brush brush. So when you're doing this, you can lay a lot of the groundwork and get a lot of stuff out of the way and then use that to your advantage. Um, so keep that in mind. Another thing to think about when we're talking about overspray is, you know, when I'm spraying like this, paint's going all down in here too. So make sure you don't have any, you know, models that, you know, maybe you're going to be painting next and you don't want blue in certain areas, you know, as the case is here with blue. Um, because the paint is going to keep going all over the place. It also might be, you really want to do this in a well-ventilated space. Because um, if you don't, again, you're going to get, you know, shades of blue paint everywhere. I painted a metallic in a room, and everything in the room had this real light metallic haze to it. So, uh, so you got to watch out. Um, now, with these guys, I actually want more overspray that I'm getting here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the airbrush way back. I'm going to spray from a distance, and I'm going to slowly add the paint on so that I get a little bit of a... Oh, my paint's not really coming out. Uh, if your paint's not coming out, we can clean. The other thing you can do is if you pull the needle back, any of that paint that's clogged up on the end a lot of times will disappear, and then you just push it down just air, and you can kind of clean the tip off. Anyway, so we're just going to slowly pull back the, the, the needle. And when I do it from a distance, I cover much more space, and that allows me to get a much more gradual transition. Is that coming up? I think that's coming up on the video, right? You guys can see that. So, so we're just going to add just kind of some subtle, subtle transitions here. Uh, another thing to think about when you're airbrushing, especially if you're going to be airbrushing multiple colors and layers. <laughs> excuse me, my nose is running. It's cold in this room. Um, is the, you know, what colors are you going to be painting and what's the best order to paint them in? Um, now, most of the time, dark colors go over lighter colors better. So if it were me, most of the time I'd want to start with a... Oops, this thought. I'd want to start with a um, lighter color and then move on to darker colors. With this ghost tint, I know that it doesn't really cover. It just kind of changes the color of whatever I put it on. So if I were to spray this over an orange, you know, I would get a greenish color. So I start with this color. Now I know um, in a few minutes when I start painting the orange, I'm going to want to do a transition because on these Tyranids, I'm making all their weapons green. Um, and I like the effect of painting the green over the blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little bit of blue here. I'm thinking ahead at this point. And I'm just going to kind of lay it on the middle. And I'm going to slowly start fading it off and pulling the brush away as I go back. So see how it's you know, a nice, real nice fade there. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I kind of let it build up in one spot and then slowly pull it off. Oh, and we want the front of that. This has got a flat edge, so see how it stayed white there? We need to... Well, I might be almost out of blue. It might be perfect timing. There. So when we get to the orange step, we'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this uh, because I'm going to do the same thing on uh, these arms and on his legs, but we don't need to see all that. So I'll see you guys in a moment. And we are back. So, um, let's do that orange we were talking about. So we'll put some drops of orange in here. Now, before someone yells foul, if anybody's really watching my videos that closely, uh, I went back through and some of the blue wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it, so I went over and kind of darkened that a little bit, noticed a couple spots that I missed. Went ahead and did his legs. And since his arms are magnetized, uh, it was actually kind of easy. I used uh, just a little metal something here to magnetize them to and paint them up. Uh, what you can see is the same sort of thing. So anything that's that I consider a weapon, I'm getting just a little bit of that uh, overspray on. Uh, and then we'll see how super difficult that next part is when we get there. So we'll add that to this video too. Since it's all part of the effect. So let's look at this guy. So orange. Now the thing with this orange paint too, I've noticed, so all the paints seem a, a little different. The orange likes to dry on the tip of the needle a lot more. Um, so I need to clean that tip quite a bit because what I'll notice is if I pull back just a little bit and I'm not getting any orange paint coming out of there, then I know that it's starting to dry up on the tip and basically that, that dried up paint is just blocking the, 
blocking the orange paint from uh, from spraying, and then you pull back, and then you get a big blast, and you ruin everything, and you cry, and you run, and it's you know it's no fun for anybody. So let's make sure we're painting. Yeah, we got a little bit. I pull back just a little bit, and I get a very very light. That's what I want to see. So. Um, because we want super bright colors, and this is a real light orange going over white, it's a real nice, we get a real bright orange. So the other thing I've noticed with the orange, unlike the blue, is it does, it takes, it seems like a little bit longer to dry uh, on the model, and it's real easy for it to pile up and get kind of a, um, like that running pooling effect, so we're just going to go very light and lots of layers. The other thing I've noticed is that as you add the orange, it is very, it's kind of hard to tell how much paint's coming out on the subsequent layers. Um, so you kind of have to look for that shine from it getting, from it kind of getting wet, because what happens is I want to add another layer, and then all of a sudden I put on too much paint, it starts to pool up and bleed, and then i got to put a whole bunch of layers over that. So slow and steady with, uh, with your layers. So... And you'll see, so you're going to start seeing, the more colors you add with the airbrush, uh, the better I find it works. So when you start with just one color, you get a lot of overspray and it kind of doesn't look good. But as those areas start overlapping, we get that kind of cool green effect. And uh, keep an eye on that as, this, as I add more layers of that orange. You start to get on the wings a little bit too, but we're not worried about that. So Again, especially because these tyranids are organic, we can make that work to our advantage. Oops, see that? That's what happens. That's what you want to avoid. So, um, I'm glad I did it so I can show you guys. So that's what happens if you put too much paint too soon. Um, and it gets worse the closer the brush is to the model. That's where you got to really play with, play with your air compressor and get the right, um, uh, right pressure level. Because the closer you get, the more likely that is to happen because there's more pressure from the air pushing that paint around. So... You'll figure it out. It's one of those things that takes practice. Every airbrush is a little different. Every compressor is a little different. So play around with it. You can do what I did. I assembled like 50 gaunts. And I really got a feel for the paint and the colors I was using on those gaunt models that I don't care too much about. Right? Because they're just going to, you're going to be pulling them off by the handful. So. And right now I can tell I'm starting to get paint blocked up on the tip. So we're going to just, this Q-tip's already been pretty kind of wet. So we're just going to... That was gross. Yeah, now we're spraying good again. Now, the other thing, too, with the airbrush, and I was talking overspray, in a situation like this, if I'm spraying here, any paint I miss is going to keep coming over here. So there's a couple things you can do. You can hold it, depending on the model, with your hand. You can use, a lot of people use blue or sticky tack. You can put, like, a paper towel down, right? So I could paint like this all day. Right, see all that orange that got over there? None of it's on the wing. Right, so just some things to think about. Um, the paint's going to keep going. So I'm also, in particular, picking angles where I can spray, where I don't have to worry about that. Because the more I got to fuss with covering up certain areas, you know, the longer it's going to take. And part of the beauty of the airbrush is how quick you can do things. So just something to be mindful of. And again, I'm not worried about it a little bit. Because that gives kind of, kind of a cool effect. Like, that actually looks kind of cool to me. Once I add the little spots and stuff, we'll, you know, that'll break that up. So now, The other thing I've noticed, too, if you see, I got a little extra blue right there. Um, little mistakes and things like that. Use to your advantage. Use it as an opportunity to... Now i got to find a way to cover that up. You know, maybe I put some some gore effect there and... Or maybe I make it look like it's a, uh, you know, some smoke from a and, and char from a bullet grazing off them. You know, you can, if you have little mistakes like that, it's not the end of the world. Cover it up with something, and it's a good way to learn some new techniques. So, covering up with my thumb because I don't really have a good way to not get the wing here. All right. Uh, let's do this head here real quick. You can see some of that overspray already on here. Um, we're going to go real light and slowly build up because we don't want to get too much orange on the blue skin. 
We're not worried about a little bit, especially on these guys, because it's organic and it has kind of a cool look. But So if you remember what we did with the blue, we're doing the same thing here with the orange. We're just starting kind of down here and slowly fading it up a little. We'll give that side a little bit of time to dry and flip her over. See that? It's a fun little transition. The airbrush makes it real easy to do trans transitions from that would normally be difficult colors to transition from. So here you can see the orange as being kind of a light color. It's a little green on the top, so we're going to have to put a couple more layers on there, but we also want to let that dry a little bit. So I'm going to go back in and get the top of this guy again. Uh, we're also going to get his chest pieces here. The same thing. There's a lot more blue on these because they're smaller and the skin kind of comes up to it in a weird angle, so we're just going to have to put more layers of orange, but not a problem, we're not worried about that. And I'm getting the paint in pretty much as thin as possible. Because I don't want it to, I have to get real close. So I can do a lot of little layers like this, and I'm not worried about coming back over. What I'm doing with that big blast is I'm just pulling, pushing down and pulling out really to clear up any clogs on the end of the brush. So just push in, pull all the way back. You get a big blast of paint and you can clear the nozzle out too. It's another subtle thing that you might not have noticed and you will the more you start painting, but before I put the paint, before I put the airbrush up, I'm always pushing down and getting air going and moving it out. Because what will happen is if I pull back, and I've got a little paint on the tip. I don't know if we'll see this. Yeah, it's a little hard to see in the camera, but you'll spray little splatters of paint. So I'm always getting that airbrush going before I put it up to the model, and then pulling back to get my paint moving. Because the last thing I want to do is spray little splatters of paint all over the place. All right, so we're just going to go and kind of do a couple more layers just to make sure that's all pretty even, and then we're going to do the same to all my other little bits, uh, and I'll meet you guys back here in a moment. And we are back again. Did you miss me? Probably not, since that was probably immediate for you guys. Um, so we've painted our little, we've painted all our orange bits. Yay. I like doing these little guys orange as opposed to the green effect, because it looks more like bony stuff than kind of weapon parts so anyway um last little spot we got here is some pink uh and the pink on this guy this is kind of how you would do this is very similar to how i do my glowing eye effect on a lot of my guys but what we're going to use this for is just some more little subtle work so all these little exposed muscly bits we're going to do now this is something that you really get one shot at um, because we're kind of going over blue, it's going to be real hard to paint this to fix any mistakes we make here. So we got to make sure the paint's playing nice, which it is. Uh, and this is where you need that feel for the brush. So again, I know right where that uh, where that air is going to come out, so or where that paint's going to apply. So I'm going to pull back ever so slowly and very very slowly build up. I'm getting the absolute minimum amount of paint that will come out of the brush as possible. Okay, so I'm going to go around and do that on all these. Now I kind of want it to go a little further than that spot. Um, because it gives it a cool transition. But if I wanted to make, that already kind of looks a little bit like it's glowing. When we fill that in, if I put bright white highlights on that, that would look like it's got glowing meat and flesh. Uh, I'm also going to do that just to kind of highlight the, the mouth a little bit. So let's do that. 
Again, knowing where the paint's going to go as soon as I start pulling back, and as slow as I can get that paint to come out. Oops, see, that's, I did a little too much there. So I'm going to hit that from a distance just with the airbrush to put some air on it and get it to dry. So this is just air. Now I can slowly start adding that paint again. Okay. And that gives his face kind of a cool effect. So when I go in and I pick the teeth out with white uh, and I paint his eyeball and stuff like that, that'll look real good. Okay. So maybe we'll high speed this for you guys. And high speed, go! shake up those paints welcome to the bonus feature so that last video was ended right pretty much where i wanted it to anyway but interrupted with a phone call since i'm recording on my phone um that happens i should have gone into airplane mode anywho so got a little paint cup um some ghost tint green from uh minotaur really loving these paints if you can't tell so i'll just put it into a cup so this is again super bonus feature if you guys don't have some advanced uh, painting techniques this might not be super helpful but i'll show you anyway so we're going to get a little green on the brush just that ghost on the brush nothing fancy and um we're going to paint oh, wow super difficult again super advanced feature right we're painting on an ink so if you can see, right, that blue, once you put that green on, gives it super nice effect. It's almost cheating how easy it is. Again, oh, so advanced, this technique. Sorry, my hands are a little shaky. Oh, wow, we made it. Okay, we did another one. Uh, so advanced. This is a very, very difficult technique. Only pro painters need apply. Um, let's look at it here on his horn. Remember I told you about the transition we're going to get here. Now we're really going to see an effect. Okay. Got a little too much paint on the brush. I actually chipped off some of the white here. Probably when I set it down, paper is tough on these guys. Look at how advanced that looks. And really there was nothing to it, was there, right? We just brushed on some, some paint. Um, okay. We're going to do the same thing with this ghost tint magenta. Get a couple drops in my cup here. I don't like a wet palette with this stuff because I find if this stuff gets thinned out, uh, I tried doing that, uh, but as it gets thinned out, it doesn't really give me the effect I want. So I'm going to load my brush up. That might be a little too much. Uh, oh, stupid. So I just grabbed the, the horn here. I got fingerprints in it. So now we need to fix that real quick. Hopefully it's not too late. How many guys have you done that? <laughs> Especially with green stuff. If you green stuff at all and grab a piece that's already wet and soft to put fingerprints in it, something you just made look real nice. Anyway, so we're just going to, just like you would with a wash, the surface tension is going to put that right where you want it. So we're just going to gently pull it up to the edge there. Super ultra advanced painting technique. Like you might, guys might be doing wet blending and layering and feathering. It's got nothing on this. Super, super difficult. 
golden demons. This is crystal brush stuff right here. Like, you got to be a Jen Haley to get these kind of effects. It's heavy metal stuff here. Woo! Look how good that looks. So, we're basically just going to go through and do that everywhere here. Wee! I like the really easy stuff. Actually, that's not true. I do like a lot of the really detailing stuff. I like these final steps, even though final steps that are easy are, are probably the, the most awesome, right? Because it's super easy to do and it gives you a really cool effect. So that's pretty much all we do with this guy. Those are kind of those basic steps before we get to the final detailing. Um, so if you bear with me one second. Whoops, that's how he ruined it. See how I just put him down on that blade? That's how it got ruined. Walking across the room. And coming back. So this is kind of the final effect. This is what this guy looks like when he's done. So. So we're just brushing all those spots. So this is where, as far as we get with kind of that easy stuff, uh, and then we'll start going into the detailing. Uh, but at this point, he's he's ready to go on the table. So we feather up, you know, the, the little bones here. We put our little black spots all over, put maybe some veins in the wings to cover up some of the, the water marks and tide marks from the, from the ink, and you're good to go. So thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this was helpful, and uh, give me some recommendations on what you guys want to see next. All righty, take care. Last little bonus video, just so you guys know, it truly is Snowmageddon, Snowpocalypse. Look how much this is, what we're dealing with out here in the Northeast. So it's a good day for airbrushing, don't you think? Yeah, look at the, I don't know if you can really see the size of these flakes. It's freaking ridiculous out here. Yeehaw. Anyway, yeah, you can't even see anything. Look how deep that is. It's been snowing for like since 4 a.m. I think. So uh, look at these bushes. It's stupid. Anyway, fun times.